So welcome to everyone and thank you for attending today's webinar introducing the VLBV2 ROV from Seabotics, Enhanced Capability and Performance. My name is Melissa Rossi and I'm the Director of Marketing and Customer Service for Teledyne Marine Vehicles. And I'm going to give you just a few housekeeping instructions before I introduce you to our speakers and start the presentation. So some general housekeeping. In today's session, everyone is muted due to the large audience. If you have a question about anything you see or hear during the presentation today, please submit your questions to us. There should be a question mark or a questions area in the control panel that you can submit from. And we encourage you to do that just as soon as you think of the question so you won't forget it. At the end of the presentation today, we'll try to answer everyone's questions as they've been submitted. And if for any reason we don't get to your question, uh, then there will be a list of contacts um, in the follow-up email tomorrow uh, that you'll receive where you can reach out um, for questions and some more information. About 24 hours after the webinar is over, you're going to receive an email and you will get a link to the recording from today's um, event. So I know we always get that uh, question, will I receive or will this um, session be recorded? And it will. And you'll receive a link to that um, in an e a follow-up email about 24 hours from now. And now, uh, just to discuss a, a few upcoming events on our League Link platform. So we have two webinars that are scheduled for November that are coming up. Advanced Acoustic Telemetry for Fish Tracking. Our presenter is Richard Valley, the VP of Fish Tracking Sales with Innovacy. That, uh, that webinar is going to be on Wednesday, November 4th from 10 to 10.30. And you can learn how Benthos uh, CM903 compact modems are enabling uh, Innovacy's VR4 UV, uh, UWM underwater modem to be used for tracking and recording tagged fish populations. In this webinar, Richard Valley, the Vice President of Fish Tracking Sales in Innovacy, will introduce you to this innovative technology and guide you through several real-world case studies. After that, we have engineered Cable Solutions with Brian uh, DeLeon, our North American sales manager uh, for our uh, Cable Solutions group. Uh, that's on Wednesday, November 18th from 10 to 10.45. And join us for this webinar in which we'll introduce you to our Teledyne Marine Cable Solutions team, which is comprised of Teledyne Storm Cable and Teledyne Barra Systems. Together, these organizations supply engineered solutions for challenging cable situations. Brian DeLeon, our North American sales manager, will walk you through their multifaceted solutions and the considerations you must keep in mind when designing your cable and cable assemblies. So now for today's presenters, uh, our presenter actually is Dan Shropshire, who is our Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Teledyne Marine Vehicles. Uh, in his role, Dan oversees global sales uh, of Teledyne uh, marine of the sorry global sales marketing and product line manage for a variety of Teledyne um, web research, Teledyne Gavia, Teledyne Seabotics, Teledyne Ocean Science, and Teledyne Benthos products, which include very popular and and familiar names like the Web Slocum Glider, Web Apex Profiling Floats, Benthos Acoustic Systems, Benthos Toad Sonar Systems, uh, Gavia AUVs, Seabotics ROVs. Ocean Science, USBs, and another group outside the ocean group called Teledyne Taptone. V. Pradeep is also joining us. V. K. Pradeep is also joining us, also affectionately known as V. Um, v is our product line manager for Teledyne Marine's Ocean Science surface vehicles and Seabotics remotely operated vehicles. Um, his current focus is towards the advancement and development of unmanned technologies and solutions for the unmanned systems community. Dan is going to be presenting and V will be joining us at the end of the presentation to answer any of your questions. Okay, now I'm going to turn this over to our presenters. So Dan, without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to you and let me know when you've got it. Okay, let's see, here we go. Let me get started here. 
Let me just make sure we're on the right screen here before we before we go. All right. So let's see, Melissa, what screen do we have off of? Your email. <laughs> email. Oh, that's not the right one. Hold on. Let me, just, <laughs> no, 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 no. Let me bring it over here. We can get this started. All right. Great. I'm going to just pop that into presenter mode and switch that up, and we should be good to go here. All right, how's yeah. that look? Yeah, it looks better. Awesome. All right, guys, very good. Well, uh, good day to everybody. Um, thanks yeah, for joining us. Yeah, hold on one second. I've got your presenter view up now. So I there we go. That's better. Okay, great. Okay, maybe maybe a slight delay. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, well, again, good uh, good day, everybody, and thanks for joining us this morning, uh, this afternoon, this evening for some of you guys. Um, we're really excited to be able to bring you the latest generation of our Cibotics line of uh, vectored little benthic vehicles, uh, which we're calling the VLBB Mark II. Um, this is really the kickoff today. We'll be seeing more coming out in the next few weeks through our online media, um, through the website, and uh, through other um, campaigns that you know you'll get to learn more about exactly what uh, what's coming with the new system. Uh, I'll go over that in some uh, detail this afternoon, or excuse me, this morning. And uh, if you have any questions, as, as Melissa mentioned earlier, feel free to chat us up here on the uh, GoToMeeting. Uh, Vitad is there to answer questions during the presentation. And then if uh, we have any questions afterwards, just feel free to, to stick around and we'll, um, we'll answer those as they come up. But uh, just a, a quick overview to start with here in terms of uh, Teledyne Marine. Probably most of you are familiar with our business, but I'll just go through this uh, for those of you who may not have seen these. Uh, so again, we're part of Teledyne Technologies, which is a, a very large global company. Uh, within Teledyne Technologies, we're part of Teledyne Marine, which is uh, about one third of the overall business. Uh, we have uh, 23 product brands within our marine companies. Uh, and through that, we have 15 global service centers and manufacturing centers. So everywhere from Asia to Europe to the US and North America, uh, we have another center also in South America and Brazil. Uh, we have about 1,600 employees. Uh, we do have 24-7 global support because of our, our footprint, uh, but we are one su su supplier, one provider of all things marine. So you can always talk to any of us about any of the products or services that we offer. So if you look here uh, on our, what we offer here as far as our marine brand, uh, we're really split into five main verticals. We have our interconnect, which is our cable and connector businesses. Seismic, which do streamer arrays as well as uh, real-time control systems for gun arrays and guns. We have our vehicles team, which where we're going to focus today, specifically on the Cbotics ROVs. Uh, we have our imaging group that does sonars and uh, cameras and lights. And then our instrument team, which does acoustic products from communications, positioning, and sensing of uh, currents for Doppler velocity loggers and uh, acoustic um, profilers. So that sort of makes up our total portfolio of products. Um, within the team here at uh, in the vehicle side, uh, we make vehicles that span from the surface of the ocean all the way down to the, the depths of 6,000 meters. Uh, so we have our surface boats here with Ocean Science, our 1800 and 1250s. Uh, the VLBVs uh, here, which we'll talk about today, uh, which are 300 meter depth rated all the way down to 950 meter depth rated with fiber tethers. We have our Gavi AUV at 1,000 meters, our slope and gliders also down to 1,000 meters, our profiling floats, which go down to 2,000 meters for our standard apex. And then we have our brand new Sea Raptor, which uh, is our large Gavi vehicle uh, for doing deep water surveys, which we have a version at 3,000 meters and also our 6,000 meter rated uh, very deep water AUV. Um, in addition to that, we have our deep apex float, which goes down to 6,000 meters and our venerable deep toes, which also um, go down to 6,000 meters for doing survey work. So we have a lot of different equipment for pretty much the whole water column, and um, we span many different industries. If you look at our locations, uh, we have a, our Northeast office here in Falmouth, Massachusetts, which is where I'm located. We have our West Coast office in Poway, which is also the RDI Manufacturing Center. 
And we have our office in Iceland where Gavi is located. We have service centers at all these locations as well uh, as they are manufacturing sites. Um, speaking of Cibotics in particular now, uh, the company was founded in 1991 uh, and it was acquired by Teledyne about six, seven years ago now. Um, roughly 20 employees, main office is currently in Poway, California. Um, and again, we have the ROVs as well as our ocean science products that are made out of this, this uh, factory. Uh, again, today we're talking about Cibotics. So some of you may be aware that we made a, an announcement last week that the production facility is actually going to be moving from our Poway office in California out to our vehicle manufacturing center here in Massachusetts. Um, we've had the company out in California now for many, many years. The company started in the San Diego area and has been there ever since. Um, so it's a, it's a big move from that standpoint that the, the manufacturing is moving, but um, we uh, will be doing this closer towards the end of the year, the beginning of next year. Uh, should be a seamless transition from the customer side, um, but it will help us to put the vehicle manufacturing with the rest of our vehicles that are made here in Massachusetts, including our gliders, Apex floats, all of our acoustic systems. So it helps us really integrate uh, the vehicle production teams a lot more tightly. The engineering center for all of our ROVs is um, out in Falmouth already. So our engineering team um, has been here for quite some time now. Uh, so we'll also be integrating the manufacturing with the local engineers, uh, which we feel is going to have a lot of synergy as well. So um, so it is a big move uh, physically, but um, again, we feel like the synergies that we're going to gain from it are going to be really great. Um, and we feel like this is going to be a really big benefit for our customers as well. So so it is, uh, is going to be a, a move here towards the end of the year. We will still maintain a service and repair capability in California. Um, and all the details of this for the customer base will be um, laid out as soon as we get final timelines of exactly when things should change. So if you're already a customer of ours, you'll certainly be hearing from us regarding billing or uh, where to send things for service and repair or any of those types of items. Um, so keep on the lookout for that. But as I mentioned, this will be happening really more towards the beginning of next year is where most of this will, this will be happening. So a little bit more about what Cibotics has made. Uh, so over the years, if you're familiar with our product line, we have really two, two vehicle types. We've had the, the little benthic vehicle, which are the smaller inspection class ROVs. And then we have our vectored little benthic vehicles, which is the, again, the 300 and the 950. Uh, those are a little bit more of a light work class uh, ROV, um, heavy inspection class ROV uh, with a lot of different capabilities. Um, last year, at the end of the year, we had made an announcement that we're, we're fading, phasing out of the LVV product line. Um, we're doing that mainly because we ran into a number of obsolescence issues with parts that were being supplied for that particular product. Um, a lot of the items in there really were just old technology, uh, again, spanning back to the beginning of the company, uh, almost 20 years now, uh, some of those things. So we made the decision to go ahead and discontinue that for now. Um, it doesn't mean that's a, a done product forever, but uh, for now, we're, we're really phasing that out and focusing on our VLBBs and, um, and making sure that we make those as robust and, um, and expandable and, and, and reliable as possible. Uh, and so it's, it's really why you're seeing this meeting today or this kickoff today of our next generation VLBBs that we're, we're spending our effort there to really create a great product. Um, and as I said, it doesn't mean that the LBB is dead forever. It's just for now, uh, our focus is on the VLBB um, and getting that running. So uh, again, we have our two versions, uh, 300 and 950. We also have a crawler attachment that we can add. Uh, this, is, this remains, this is standard to the systems and has been uh, since their inception. Um, we have a lot of different options available, which I'll talk about here just in a minute. Um, and, uh, and a lot of different sensor options in particular. So if you look at markets and applications for these types of vehicles, um, we built a whole number of different uh, in, in variations of this system in the past. Um, things like the tunnel inspector here, which you can see in the middle, an adaption of the VLBV uh, with a, a cart for doing tunnel inspection. Uh, tank inspection, here we partnered with a sonar company um, to make a very high resolution um, imaging sonar, or they made the high resolution imaging sonar, we attached it to the ROV, uh, and with the assembly could do tank inspections. Um, we have flyouts that we've done with large ROVs, 
um, and uh, worked with all sorts of different customers from launching on ribs to large ships, oil and gas platforms, et cetera. So whole whole bunch of different ways you can use these vehicles and, and change them and, and use them in different situations to be able to accomplish a number of different jobs. Um, as you can see on this page, so everything from infrastructure inspection to offshore oil and gas inspection, um, port and harbor security for looking for objects, um, you know, de defense and security, even for detonating mines, which we'll see uh, coming up a little, in a little bit. So again, a lot of different opportunities and options with vehicles like this. Specific sensors and toolings that we offer, a lot of this hasn't changed. I will go through what is new for the, the Mark II vehicle um, in particular and, the, and some new sensors that we're able to host. Uh, but we have a number of different options for cameras, uh, color and black and white, uh, high definition as well. Uh, laser scaling, which is something, again, I'll touch on in just a minute. Um, number of different sonars, both for 2D scanning and 3D imaging. So one of these, uh, one of our items, our options right here, as you can see in this particular image on the left, is our BlueView BB5000 3D imaging sonar. This is a great option for doing infrastructure inspection around um, piers, uh, dams, bridges. This is great for bridge scour. Uh, but the idea is that you can fly the vehicle, it's a, really a flying tripod with the imaging sonar or the scanning imaging sonar on top. The vehicle lands on the ground and does a 360 degree scan of the area in three dimensions, building a point cloud of solutions which can then be downloaded into the PDS software uh, that stitches it together. Um, you can also use Keras for some of this as well um, and create great 3D images and maps subsea of, uh, of those areas. Uh, you can then fly to the, another location nearby, do another scan, and the software will seamlessly stitch that all together for you. So, again, we have a couple of um, examples coming up of some really great images using these tools. Um, cameras, uh, we talked about uh, cameras and lights. Uh, we have a number of different options there. Um, USBLs, which we'll talk about for tracking, altimeters for depth finding, uh, DVLs for uh, navigation. So again, you can read this, but there's a number of options that uh, become are standard options with our systems. All right, so without much further ado, let's let's look at the new vehicle. So here it is. This is the, the new color scheme with our Mark II vehicle. Um, this is, uh, again, what we're calling the VLBB Mark II. Um, number of new things which I'll highlight right here. First of all, we're working on, uh, the, or we have a new version of an HD camera. Um, we're working with a company specifically on a custom build for us right now for that camera. So this is going to provide high def um, imaging and video. Um, it is an IP camera, so um, we will be able to get uh, full resolution, not just on fiber, but um, eventually also through copper. Um, that's, that option isn't available immediately today, but within the next six months, that option will be available where we can do HD over copper. Um, so we're working on that right now, and we're really excited about that. And in addition to that, um, that camera happens to also have a laser scaler, uh, so you can, can use that as well. So it's a nice combined unit for that. Uh, we have replaced all of our thrusters with new Gen 3 thrusters. Big advantage of these particular thrusters is they, they provide the same amount of thrust with about 25% better efficiency. So from a power management standpoint, that uh, provides you, um, you know, less power to drive the vehicle uh, and less topside power required. Um, there are certainly advantages to that. Um, these motors are now manufactured um, by a different motor company. So um, those are, are uh, something is now made here uh, through a company called Maxon. Um, so we're new using new thrusters. The new sonars that we have that were um, options, specifically we're looking here at the BlueView uh, Mark II. This is the M900 Mark II, which I have a slide coming up on, which you'll be able to see, but we have improved range and resolution with the new uh, BlueView imager. Um, as far as our electronics upgrades, we have a new VDSL upgrade that uh, is in place. Um, that will allow for faster communications. Um, that allows more data, more bandwidth for sensors. And that is the reason we can now host the HD camera over copper is with the new VDSL upgrade. Um, we are standardizing around a six port uh, model. So we now have six connections standard with every system. Um, in the past, we had had four ports, but we now have opened it up to six. And we have a, a much higher resolution um, attitude reference sensor in there for 
navigation. So that provides better accuracy, works really well with new software packages that we have coming up. We're also uh, able to host our new Teledyne GPS underwater uh, GPS receiver. Obviously, this is for the surface use to get a GPS fix that also helps with navigation. But that particular uh, antenna is depth rated to 1,000 meters. So that antenna can go all the way down. But at the surface, we can get up to one meter accuracy uh, from GPS um, for that. Uh, we're also proud to announce, and this is sort of a sneak preview of both these uh, Benthos items, but our new Teledyne Ultra Compact USBL. So this is a brand new uh, transducer for us that fits in with our existing USBL Trackit system. Um, this particular USBL is band C, so it has about 1,000 to 1,500 meter range. Um, we get very good accuracy, about 0.5% of slant range accuracy. Uh, so this improves both range and accuracy from our previous offerings for USBL. Um, it also uh, is a smaller package now from what we had in the past. Um, so as you can see, fits right into the top of the vehicle very nicely with the uh, other units. So we're very excited about the launch of this product as well. And then finally, we have some new DVL options. Uh, through RDI, specifically the, the Wayfinder, um, which is the brand new DVL, which I'll show you in just a minute. Very small size, compact uh, for small vehicles. Um, but we also still host the Pathfinder, which is the standard DVL that has been on the vehicle in the past. But we now have the extended range capability that RDI is offering with their DVLs. So you get better bottom lock, or excuse me, better range for bottom lock and accuracy. So. Those are all new enhancements, both on the system and in the sensor side, that really make this a really complete package. Um, the other thing I'll option uh, or uh, explain on the third-party side is our sensor options. Um, we have uh, we still host our TriTech USBL and sonar options. That's a very popular package for us, which is great. Uh, we have um, talked with Blue, Blueprint SubC about a number of different options, including a multi-degree freedom arm that some customers have integrated. So that, that's a third-party integration, but uh, we host the interface for that. And then um, we have also uh, been working on CP and UT probes for doing cathodic uh, protection and looking at uh, corrosion monitoring. So another m number of other sensor options with third-party vendors, uh, which we're very excited to partner with them and offer as part of our vehicle package as well. So if you look at the top side, we have a number of changes here too. Most specifically, our VDSL upgrade also on the top side package to partner with our, our system on the subsea. Um, we are moving to a Linux operating system and getting away from Windows. The main reason for that is we are now moving towards green, using Green C um, as our user interface. So this is the uh, Workspace Basic, Workspace Pro, and the EOD workspace that Green C offers as part of their standard commercial package. Every ROV going forward will be installed with the Green Sea Basic software program, and you will have the option of updating to the Pro or the EOD workspace package. So this is a big change from us uh, from the past, um, but we really feel this provides the best opportunity for everybody uh, to for navigation, user interface, autonomy, control. Green Sea provides a really great package that we've used for years and years now in the past, but we are now baselining that on every vehicle we sell. So that's a big upgrade and real exciting op option for us. Um, and then we have uh, a new power supply uh, software firmware update that um, provides uh, more robust power issue, or, or excuse me, more robust power to the vehicle, um, especially over longer tether lengths. So that's a, a new feature as well that just makes that whole system even more robust. So these are the new features that both on the, on the vehicle and the top side that we're excited to announce with the VLVB Mark IIs. Again, any specific questions, feel free to chat us up here and, and VTOG can answer those as we go along. Um, a couple of quick uh, other uh, quick updates here as far as, um, again, new sensor options for us that are Teledyne specific. So I'll just mention the Wayfinder DVL. So this was just launched a few weeks ago, but this is our smallest DVL yet. Uh, you can see the size here, um, very, very small. This is uh, about fits in the palm of your hand. Um, designed for, again, small ROVs in particular, so uh, has about a 60-meter depth range, again, um, so that is um, uh, for bottom tracking, so again, not, not for deep water necessarily, but if you need deeper water uh, range, then you would need to go to the Pathfinder, which also is a great fit for this vehicle. Um, but this is really for um, vehicles that will be much closer to the bottom, 
looking for navigation um, options. This pairs really well with GreenSea and our um, and our new navigation package uh, so, and our USBL package. So if, if you really need accurate navigation knowledge, this is a great fit for the system. Speaking of navigation, I mentioned the new Benthos Compact uh, modem and the Ultra Compact USBL positioning system. Uh, so what's new here is this new Ultra Compact modem transducer. As I mentioned, it's band C only. It is um, supplied external power, or excuse me, needs external power to work. The previous version had the compact modem here that did have a battery option, but was really more for a different application of tagging assets. Um, this unit is specifically purpose-built for ROVs. Um, so this is, again, power supplied by, by the ROV itself to, to reduce the size. Um, but has our full modem capability as well as being a USBL transponder. So um, it is a fully functional unit, not just for USBL, but actually for modem comms, uh, which in an ROV case is typically not needed. But there are a number of things you can use the modem comms for. And I have an example of that coming up uh, that shows how an ROV using a modem can be very useful. Um, you can see the size of it. It is, again, pretty small. Um, about the size of a Coke can, so uh, very similar to other transponders made by other manufacturers, sort of in the same size. We also offer OEM kits for this version, so uh, for people who want to integrate this into their own systems, whether that's AUVs or ROVs, we do sell the board sets and transducer, external transducer kit uh, that go with that. So this really shrinks the size of the system into something that's very, very manageable for small systems like um, ROVs and small AUVs. Uh, so we're really excited about that. That pairs well with our DAT. This is our digital acoustic transponder, which is the top side unit that goes with the with the system. The DAT then plugs into the INC top side, and with the GreenSea software, uh, provides you the USBL position of the vehicle um, at sub C. So again, very excited to, to announce that as well. Uh, I mentioned the BlueView M900 Mark II. So this is the new uh, dual frequency. Uh, imaging sonar from uh, Resan and Blueview uh, gives you this, the real-time imaging and, and low visibility. Um, it has, again, higher resolution and better, better uh, range than we had in the previous version. So this is just another great enhancement in our family of Blueview sonars, which we've hosted on these vehicles for years and years. Uh, this is the next generation. Again, we're very excited to, uh, to announce and uh, integrate onto the system. Speaking of green sea and autonomy, I mentioned this. So um, as a quick example of what that what the screen interface looks like. Uh, this is a bit of an older view. I'm actually going to show you the, the latest version here on the next slide. But again, for those of you who aren't familiar with green sea or their software package, uh, this displays the vehicle position, as you can see in a 2D plot. Um, it also allows you to mark areas of interest as in this particular example. The USBL, again, gives you the exact location and the track of the plot, along with the other I, uh, INS and DBL measurements. Um, gives you real-time visibility into what the vehicle is doing, so you can monitor different parts of it, temperatures or um, uh, any telemetry that you really need to. Uh, you can look at um, heading depth, obviously, those things. Sonar images are displayed. Uh, camera images can be displayed all in the same, same window. Um, and again, one of the big features here for us is the autonomy option. So um, if you look at the autonomy screen here, this is an image of the EOD workspace that is, uh, again, commercial product from GreenSea that we're now offering on our vehicle. Uh, this will give you um, uh, all the sort of uh, different waypoint finding, uh, orbiting, all sorts of different control modes that you would want uh, for different applications specifically here. This is an EOD for uh, explosive ordnance devices, really well built for military, mine hunters, um, port harbor, harbor security. Uh, this allows you to locate an item, mark that location. You can autonomously fly back to those locations. You can autonomously, again, orbit a specific location. Um, you can do search grids. You know, there's a lot of different options with this software package that makes it really well suited, not just for explosive ordnance devices, but really search and inspection of lots of different um, lots of different platforms. So we offer this now again as a this, the EOD workspace is an upgrade, but we offer the basic package um, for doing sensor display and navigation now with every system um, going forward. So again, exciting partnership. We're really happy to be working with GreenSea on this. Um, 
far as the upgrade options, so if you're a current LBB or VLBB owner, um, how do you upgrade some of these options? Which of these are backwards compatible? Which of these require additional hardware? Um, so I just provide a quick update chart here. Um, so if you look at this from a, a Benthos USBL perspective, if you're interested in, in um, either adding a USBL or upgrading your existing USBL, uh, upgrades that need to be made, there's an INC upgrade on the top side for plugging in the DV or the, um, the DAT. Um, and then you either need the Benthos Trackit software, uh, which, which would run on a standalone PC, or you would need the Green Sea up, 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 excuse me, upgrade uh, to be able to display that with the Green Sea software. Um, as far as the DVL for the Pathfinder Wayfinder, um, those are backwards compatible. So those work with existing systems now. So those systems you could install. If you want to install those and, and use those for navigation, again, you would need an INS package and GreenSea on the top side or equivalent um, software package to the INS integration. As far as our sub-sea GPS antenna, um, that uh, you would just need to make sure we have enough ports on the e-bottle to support it. Um, but assuming you have enough ports, then that also is a plug-and-play unit. Um, the Blueview M900 is backwards compatible with the existing system. So again, if you already have an M900 or other sonar and you want to upgrade to this, um, you just need the serial port, which is already available for that. Uh, BDSL, um, this is the, uh, uh, the new higher comm, higher bit rate BDSL option for copper systems. For this option, you do need to upgrade both the INC and the e-bottle. So both units, of course, since it's a handshake, uh, do need to be um, upgraded at the same time. But uh, but this provides you a great option. I will also mention that the one of the reasons we did this is the previous VDSL that we were using is going obsolete. So um, all systems going forward will have this new VDSL option on it. Um, if you have a vehicle that's coming in for repair and you want us to do this upgrade, um, please let us know. We could do that. Uh, if your system's working fine now, you don't need to worry about that from a from an upgrade standpoint. But do be aware if there are any issues in the future with that particular VDSL module um, or the board that damages that VDSL module, then um, there is a you know you would have to replace not just that module but the INC um, part of that as well. Um, so again, those things have to go hand in hand, as you all know. So that's uh, that's a new upgrade with the VDSL. Um, anybody's interested in upgrading to the Green Sea Autonomy package, uh, we can provide pricing and options for that. That does include an INC upgrade because of the computer, as we talked about, so that's an upgrade to Linux. Um, and then depending on the version you get of Green Sea, whether that's EOD Workspace, Workspace Pro, or the basic, an iBottle or eBottle, depending again on what version of vehicle you have, may be required to support that upgrade. Again, for anyone who's interested in, in autonomy packages and upgrade options, please let us know. You can talk to Bitad, myself, Jamie Kerrig, Mario, any of the, the standard salespeople that you would normally talk with. Thruster upgrades are backwards compatible. Um, again, those fit right in with the existing system. So if you want the thruster upgrade, please let us know. We can replace your thrusters. Um, they do need to be um, replaced in pairs. Uh, because they do um, take power a little differently, it is best to replace them in pairs. Um, we can tune that, but it is a little better for, again, um, simplicity just to, to do that. And then finally, on the HD cameras, those are backwards compatible as well. If you have a fiber system, however, if you want HD over copper uh, with these new cameras, then the VDSL option also should be upgraded at the same time. So that just gives you a couple ideas of these upgrade paths, but for any questions in particular about if you have a system and you want to do some of these things or any of the other sensors that I mentioned earlier, again, please reach out to us and uh, we'll provide you uh, an update on that. Um, so getting past that now, a couple other things I just want to talk about today uh, on, on the new system is some of the options we have um, with some of the new software that we're going to be hosting. Um, and some of the new hardware options we're hosting will really lend themselves to some new and exciting applications. For a while now, we've shown the ability to use the crawler for doing ship hall inspections. Uh, this is great for doing for finding objects on the hull or even looking for damage on hulls. Um, the new software, especially the Green Sea package, is going to enable us to do this even better. Um, the, the crawler, we actually are making an upgrade on the crawler too. We have a new crawler motor with that as well. Um, so we do have some options or new upgrades on that as well. Um, but uh, uh, this is a great option is, you know, for, again, um, people who have a lot of uh, hauls, 
as you can see, it can also float with the crawler assembly on it and then reattach itself. Uh, this is a non-magnetic crawler, so it works using a vortex generator, which um, provides a suction that keeps the vehicle on the surface of the ship while it's uh, maneuvering. So um, we've had that, that option for a number of years now. Um, moving on here to another great application, which, uh, of course, we're seeing more and more in the industry, but the integration of the, an ROV with an autonomous surface vessel. In this particular case, we're working with a company in France to demonstrate that capability. Um, we've integrated this uh, vehicle on multiple different ASVs, including WAM, the WAMV system uh, from uh, uh, Marine Robotics. Um, the, uh, it's a, again, great option with our new software package, specifically with Green Sea for navigation. Combining both that package with the ASV allows you to do a lot of uh, really interesting things now in terms of especially inspection, mine hunting. In this case, they were doing pipeline inspections with the ROV from the vessel. So they get another feature of, um, of the new software. So other um, solutions here, uh, I wanted to just talk a little bit about our mine countermeasure options. I've mentioned this a few times now, but we're spending a lot of effort on working on developing purpose-built ROV systems for mine inspection and disposal. Uh, so we're combining a lot of capabilities we've had in the past now to perform those, um, those functions. Uh, we've done custom operations. This is actually an old Benthos vehicle, but we've done custom software operations for doing um, some, some multi-arm articulations. We've had air deploy options, uh, small boat deployment. But these vehicles are really well suited for this particular job of inspection and disposal. Uh, we've worked with a number of militaries around the world over the years on creating in, uh, unique solutions. Uh, so a list of many of those are here, uh, including the US Navy. Um, a couple different options here, so we're doing the same job. The, the vehicle on the left is uh, using the Viper system from ECS. Uh, this is a nail gun solution for mine detonation. Um, it attacks a, uh, attaches a charge to underwater device, which is then detonated through the shock tube. Um, so we, we've worked on several new or several projects now with them on that. On the right was a integration with the Barracuda. Uh, this is another. Um, charge device that, uh, that well, we've worked with in the past. So this is, again, a great way to deliver these charges to, the, to a system. Small vehicles, again, portable, you can see, see the benefit. Um, quick video here just showing the example of that. This was actually using that Barracuda system. Um, this is attaching the mine, or excuse me, the, the charge to a um, subsea unit. Um, so this here, you can watch the vehicle will approach the, uh, the target here. It senses the target and then will attach the uh, attach the device by the nail gun. So then backs off and then the shock tube comes with it for detonation. So as you pull away, you can back off several thousand meters. This particular RV is attached to a top float. Um, the top float then triggers the detonation by a satellite communication and down to the shock tube. So again, example, this is a, shows you what the nail gun can do. This is again, a barricaded test that shows when you fire the nail gun, the type of damage it incurs on the mine. Um, and so again, quick video here, this was not an ROV detonation, but just goes to show you detonation here. This was um, courtesy of a group we worked with in the UK on this as well. But yeah, significant cost savings for detonating mines this way, certainly gets, it's a much safer um, solution than having divers do this. Um, you can actually, uh, you know, do this uh, multiple times in the same field, so you can reusable and do it again and again and again. So um, it really saves both time and money um, in terms of disposal of mine and identification of mine. Um, so one thing I, I mentioned earlier, I just want to highlight here. We have a just another sneak peek. This is a brand new system that we're developing uh, for mine detonation. This is a what we're calling the Benthos Acoustic Initiator. Benthos modem technology to, um, to uh, uh, trigger a mine. So instead of using shock tube, the idea here is that you attach the charge to a device, uh, you back away from that device, um, and then uh, there's no shock tube attached. You would acoustically initiate the charge using the Benthos modem. So as I mentioned before, we have the USBL transponder on top of the vehicle. That transponder, as I said, also acts as a modem, so you can use that to communicate with the acoustic initiator to trigger the charge. 
So here again, you have a lot of flexibility. Instead of having the shock tube or worrying about a surface expression, you can actually use the ROV as the triggering method. The ROV can back off a thousand meters. With long tether, the, the ship or personnel can be backed off even further. So with this particular system, it's a great way to um, initiate these, these uh, detonations subsea. Um, I'll just close off with a, another example of, uh, of, of ROVs and, and the way we've used them for uh, different um, uh, military exercise. In this case, this was done in Thailand, an exercise called Cobra Gold. We combined a Gavia AUV uh, Ocean Science Z-Boat and our VLBV to scan and image an area um, of interest. This was an exercise, so this was just to demonstrate the capability. But there were three different areas that we were interested in surveying. There was a, an old pier here that was, um, that was dilapidated and falling down. There was an existing pier here for docking ships. And then there was an area outside of that that they wanted to scan um, using the Gavi AUV. So uh, we had a couple of different side scan options with the Gavia. Uh, we were using a Klein and EdgeTech uh, side scan system here, as well as our Blueview Multibeam uh, sonar. For the ROV, we had the BV5000, which I mentioned earlier, the 3D scanning sonar, as well as our Bowtech cameras and lights. And on our Z-boat, we had our multi-beam from Teledyne Rison and Odom, as well as our LiDAR system uh, from Velodyne. Uh, so a combination of all these different sensor packages uh, cr created some great images. Uh, we went off and did this in a few days, um, did the survey, launched the boat worked with the expedition team there. As you can see, all this was done with no, no ribs, no boats. It was all beach launched and all portable, um, all carried by hand. Uh, a couple of the images here from our survey. So the Gavia survey produced some great images here that were stitched together with our um, USB survey from the Z-boat. So we combined those with Keras and uh, PDS. Um, here was side scan imagery from the AUV, so this showed a couple of interest, uh, items of interest as well as some hazards here. A little more detail on that, you can actually see there's some boat-shaped object here that was discovered that we went back and looked at. And then we, as I mentioned, we stitched all this together. So here we're actually stitching together our LiDAR data and our BAPI data. So this is using the multi-beam data, um, again, stitched together in, in PDS and Keras, so along with the LiDAR data um, to show both above and below water um, gives you great uh, you know, great awareness of both surface and seafloor. Um, so we have the ability with all these different sensor packages to do this and software packages to make this work. Here's a great image of the dock. As I mentioned, there were a couple of um, uh, floating stanchions out here and then the dock itself. Uh, but again, combining all this data into one, um, you know, one data set is really powerful. All right, the last thing I'll uh, talk about today, and then we can open it up to specific questions for me and myself. Um, we are currently running a, a LVV trade-in option, or actually it's really an ROV trade-in option here. Um, so if anybody who is an LVV user is interested in upgrading to the new VLVV, um, please let us know. We are currently offering up to 25% off the price of a new vehicle if you trade in your old one. Uh, so if you're interested in that, again, please let one of our sales teams know. It is a great time to, to move from old systems to new. Uh, and mentioned it's 25% off uh, of the base system, and we can talk about sensor options as well uh, if you're interested in, um, in new sensors as well. Uh, also, as I mentioned, any other upgrades that you're interested in, if you want to keep your existing vehicle but just add to it, again, please let us know, um, and we should be able to help you out with that. So that's what I've got for today. Um, hopefully you guys found that interesting. And uh, again, if you have any specific questions, then I think we'll stop here and um, go into our question and answer mode. Dan, can you hear me? I can. Okay, good. Wasn't sure because uh, my little indicator light didn't indicate I was unmuted. Um, all right, so I don't actually have any questions yet from the audience, so if you haven't uh, obviously done so already, please uh, take this moment to just type out any questions you would have for Dan or for V, uh, and we'd be happy to answer those now. So um, just encourage you if, you, if you have questions about the presentation or the capabilities of the, the new system, that would be great. Um, we'd love to answer them for you uh, while we have this opportunity. So I'll give you a few minutes to do that.
Um, B, anything else? Are, are you on the line as well, B? I am here too as well. Hey, welcome. Um, anything you. you'd like to add? <laughs> anything you'd like to add to, uh, it, while we're waiting to see if anyone has any questions for the two of you? No, I think uh, I think Dan pretty much had it all covered too as well. Uh, actually, let me share my webcam here so I could say hello to everyone here. So let me know if everyone can see me here. Um, hi everyone, I'm at home. <laughs> no, I think um, Dan um, addressed everything pretty well here too as well. I think we're really looking forward to this next gen platform here. Uh, I think it certainly bridges that gap uh, from all the um, improvements, but more importantly, the evolution of the actual platform itself. So. We've certainly taken all the feedback, uh, all of the um, customer requirements, customer feedback, um, even all of, even all of the actual complaints as well, um, and have brought all this up over to the um, engineering team and have really challenged them and said, okay, you know, these are the things that folks are asking for. These are the things that folks want. What can we do to make this platform better? And um, we really think that the Mark II is sort of um, the culmination of all that work of all the past years. So, um, and Dan talked about this too as well, but there's a lot of expertise here, cross expertise between a lot of different engineering um, applications, application types, right? You have folks now working on the RVs that um, work on AUVs and work on both. So um, that sort of cross pollination of um, engineering expertise, I think is um, really sort of the um, the power here of uh, what the Seabotics vehicle actually represents here. So, um, you know, fortunately, we're not able to um, actually demo it out to people, um, you know, in um, in real time right now because we can't meet. Um, but certainly, if you have any interest in the vehicle, again, let the sales team know, contact me uh, directly, and we can find a way to get the platform there. We will. Um, so with that, I think that's all I have. So, uh, pleasure seeing everyone and I hope everyone is safe. I have a couple of questions here now that have come in. So, uh, two of the first two are actually the same question. They're wondering, uh, what the lead time on a new system would be. When are we expecting to ship? So, um, I guess I could, uh, Dan, do you want to take that one first? Would yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. So, anything? okay. It's a little bit of a complicated answer only because of the the move is in the middle of this. So new yeah. systems at this point, uh, I think deliveries at this point are out into March. Um, so uh, part of that is um, we do have a bit of a backlog right now, but the other part of that, again, with the move that we're um, wanting to make sure that we have everything up and running um, out here in uh, Falmouth, you know, before we uh, commit to any deliveries. But um, so March 1st is sort of what we're looking at right now is our current delivery schedules for new systems. But um, please let us know if you have any requirements for something sooner. Uh, we sort of, certainly can look at whether those options are available. Um, but yeah, we definitely will see those lead times come down a bit um, once we get transitioned all the way over into Falmouth. Um, so next year we'll get back into more standard lead times. But uh, yeah, at this point, that's that's what we're looking at. Okay. Uh, my next question uh, is addressed to you, Dan. It says, can you speak about the thruster configuration of the new VLBVs, specifically the number of vertical thrusters? The image that was shown had additional vertical thrusters. Is that the standard on the new Mark II vehicle? Yeah, good question. So we have both six and eight thruster options. The standard vehicle set comes with six, but the software does allow for eight. So um, we can, yeah, we can handle either configuration, and both of those, um, well, I said, both those are standard, but our standard vehicle is a six thruster vehicle. Yeah, the other one's a standard. Okay. Option. Next question is: Is Green C custom made for each use case specific, or is it a platform with most of the features? Yeah, that's a good that question. So, and B, you can jump in on this too, but yeah, it is. So, the Green Sea package that we have, um, previous Green Sea options for Seabotics were custom made um, for Seabotics. So we had something we used to call Smart Flight. And, um, and so, yeah, that was a, a specific version that was made for, for us. The versions that we're going to now in the future are going to be the commercially available version that Green Sea offers through their Open Sea software package. So 
the um, yeah, there, there are no specific customized features for a vehicle or a use case. You're just using uh, its configuration settings uh, for that particular job that you establish when you, you know, you're setting up the software. So it you know, really depends on the sensors that are part of the package. So if you've got a camera you know, or a, um, a sonar system, then clearly you, know, you would want it configured to make sure that those things get displayed in the best way possible for whatever job you have. But the underlying software is sort of, I'm not gonna say infinitely flexible, but it, it, it has all those features already built into it. So um, yeah, occasionally there's might be a little bit of customization here or there, which might be required that we can always discuss um, that with Greenseed. But in general, um, all of those features are built into the system. They already allow and host a ton of sensors. I mean, it's a lot more than just the basics that Ivan showed today, but you know, they've already integrated many, many sensors into that software package. So the other advantage of us using that as our base package now is that all of those sensor options become available um, from a software standpoint because again, they've already been integrated. So um, now EOD Workspace and Workspace Pro, I will say are a little different in that they are configured specifically for doing um, more of the heavy lifting jobs. The, the Green Sea basic pro program um, doesn't come with a lot of autonomy features. It really is mostly for navigation and display. Um, it does have auto depth, auto heading, so you can do some of those things. But if you really want to get again to more advanced features of flying, specifically, as I mentioned, waypoint finding or orbiting or any of those types of things, you do need to upgrade to the Workspace Pro or if your job is more specific to sort of that EOD um, type of, uh, of a project, then that would be a good option because that package, that software package is really well built and designed for that particular mission. You've got a lot of settings that are sort of pre-configured to allow that, but ultimately it is all the same software underneath it. It's just mm -hmm. different sort of package options on top of that. So V, anything to add to that? Yeah, no, that's that's pretty much um, uh, basically spot on. You can say anything already. I mean, really, um, the upgrade packages, like uh, Dan, like Dan, you had mentioned them as well. I mean, what you get is one base um, user, one base user interface, right? So the pro of that is basically now you're sort of um, familiar with the look and the feel of the actual software. So if you do do, if you do choose to upgrade in the future, you sort of have that option. Um, I think the other note to as well is it's you know based on the packages, it's what level of autonomy are you actually look are you actually looking for, right? So are you automating your um, actual tasks more? So depending on the packages that Dan had mentioned, um, basic workspace pro and EOD workspace, it's really based on the application of what you're trying to actually do. Um, but certainly it just comes down to what level of automation you're you're actually looking for, um, and that's the extra differences in the packages there. So that's yeah. it. Right, great. I have two more questions. Uh, first one is, does the Green Sea software suite integrate easily with TriTech Gemini or Blueprint Subsea Oculus multi beams, or is it recommended that you stick with the Teledyne BlueView? Yeah, no, it, it, Green Sea supports all of those other sonar packages really well. So, yeah, there's no there's no need to pair Teledyne sensors with um, with Green C. There's not going to be any special options there or packages at, at this point that we have that would enable enable that. Um, so yeah, any of those other manufacturers we've supported for years will continue to support. Um, they make great products, and you know we're happy to uh, to put those on our vehicles as well. So whatever really fits your job best is is good, you know, and and we're happy again to support that. Um, you know, as a vehicle manufacturer, we, we try to be sensor agnostic. We think that Teledyne has great sensors, and there certainly are some advantages, you know, uh, of some of those um, packages, um, especially on the price side. But but uh, that said, yeah, TriTech and other other companies, um, you know, make great products for us for years. And yes, they all do integrating with um, the Green Sea for very, you know, for every single option and specific. Um, you know, model, we, you would want to check with Green Sea or with us and we can ask them and find out just to make sure that a particular version is, uh, is available. V, anything to add to that? Um, no, um, I, think it's, I think you covered everything. <laughs> it's great. All right, next question is, does the new Biotech camera have both focus and zoom? That's a V question. 
<laughs> yes. So, um, so, so it's not a Biotech camera. So let me specify that first. Um, it will have a zoom feature on it. The level of zoom don't have that nailed down yet because it is sort of in work right now or certain process. Um, it will have a zoom feature, whether or not it's a fixed zoom or a automatic zoom that's also being um, worked on on the engineering side as well. But yes, the short answer is it will have some sort of zoom of some sort as well as a um, focusing option too as well on the actual camera too. Okay, great. Uh, and I have a question. Can the GPS operate as a standalone system for dead reckoning navigation, or does it need to be paired with a USBL or DBL? Um, it, it, yeah, that's a good question. Um, it can be used essentially for dead reckoning. It, once it get, gets its location, the software will certainly be able to mark that and record its location. Obviously, once you dive down, um, you know, you're, you're not going to have that position. So it wouldn't, wouldn't see that once, once you're off the surface. But yeah, you should be able to update your position while you're on the surface um, with the GPS and display that on um, your chart and record the position again. Yeah. Be anything else on that? Okay. Nope. Sorry, I was on you. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry, no, so real, real, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I guess it really depends on the software end of things as well, right? So as long as you have GPS is being able to input, um, uh, you can certainly find out and ask for you, but certainly how the software interprets the actual GPS um, information, I think is the other part in this tool as well. So, but I don't see why you couldn't do that sort of action, um, that, so, that solution whilst actually operating. Yeah, if you had a, a DVL, for instance, and you had the GPS just updating, and you you know you don't necessarily need the USBL as long as you have bottom right. lock, you could actually get good positioning out of that subsea. Um, so the USBL in that sense wouldn't necessarily be needed. Uh, but the accuracy of that solution, if you had real specific questions, we'd have to um, you know talk to RDI and, and, and actually get some answers on that one. Exactly. All right. Have you made any changes or improvements to the operator hand controller unit? Yeah, we didn't mention that, did we? <laughs> yeah, so, so that's good. Uh, we're, we haven't made any specific changes to the hand controller we have, but we have integrated a um, Xbox controller. So that's something we really haven't talked a lot about. We haven't advertised yet, but we have done that. And so um, <clears throat> that's something that we'll be launching you know shortly for anybody who wants to use uh, an Xbox controller instead um, so didn't yeah, if anyone wants any more yeah sorry and if anyone wants more information on that let me know um, yeah we probably should have mentioned that piece to as well but there is a separate Xbox option now if you do want some sort of all alternative controlling on uh, controller we do have that option now okay. Uh, another question, is it possible to add a second downward-looking camera and dual video feed? Yes. Yes. I mean, B can answer that one, but yeah. Yep. Nope. Yep. Uh, absolutely too as well. So the e port, because we're standardizing to six ports now, we do have, um, you can do forward, you can do forward and rear, you can do, you know, forward and um, we have some other um, mounting clamps for cameras. So if you wanted uh, a camera, um, uh, a forward facing camera with a downward facing camera with um, uh, a clamp that we sort of have as well. You can clamp that camera on facing downward and um, the e-bottle um, port, which is uh, the cable will plug into the e-ball itself. But yes, it is possible. Okay. Uh, what are the specific capacities in turbid water visibility like on image enhancement software and hardware capabilities? So that's going to be dependent on your software, right? So um, it, on the imaging enhancement side, you're going to get the raw sonar feed coming from the actual sonar and the actual camera. Um, but um, usually there's some sort of software-based, you know, algorithm, AI-based or, or whatnot that will sort of clean all that stuff up. Uh, so nothing really to do with nothing really to do with the hardware side of things. That basically just the capabilities of the software to kind of take all that stuff out or clarify things. Okay. Yeah, it's really more we are? camera. Yeah. I was just say we don't we don't manufacture any video enhancement software. Um, anything that you get would really come from the camera manufacturer or a third party 
provider of something that does that, which we can host. We can host those, plat those software packages on mm -hmm. our system, but we don't provide that as a standard option because it really is camera dependent in some cases. Well, I guess mm -hmm. some of those are some or not, but yeah, it just depends. Yeah. Okay. Um, and as a final question, we are at the end of our one hour time um, slot here, but uh, I'll take this last question and then uh, we can take the, the, the remaining question. We have two remaining questions here uh, for those people who want to hang in there with us a little bit longer. But um, this next question is, as a follow-on to the GPS question, is a USBL needed to have, upgrade, to have upgraded auto flight capability and navigation to waypoints? No, no it, it's, it's helpful to have, right? So any, I mean, really, it comes down to the more, the more information the autonomy software has, the better it's gonna actually perform. Um, so it will take the actual um, GPS information into the, uh, the uh, autonomy engine, but um, the more better, lack of a better term here, the more better data or better information that you feed it, the more, the more, um, the higher performing it will actually be. So while the question is, yes, you can do it, um, would I recommend it? I mean, yeah, it can be done. Um, but you might not get the ideal performance that you would actually expect if you um, couple that with an active DVL. Okay. And our final question to clarify about the cameras, can the MK2 provide two simultaneous video camera outputs to the surface concurrently? Mm. So they're IP based, right? So it's just uh, essentially just an, an IP address. Um, so somewhat software specific. So it just really depends on if you want the views to come through simultaneously on the same screen, or if you want it, <clears throat> excuse me, or if you want it, um, you know, output um, somewhere else. But any any sort of IP based thing, uh, IP based sensor, you, you can always port uh, somewhere else. It's just a matter of the software can handle it. Um, I don't know if that the green that functionality in Green C. Um, um, certainly possible right now, but I can certainly find out. Yeah, we can find out. I don't know the answer to that either. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I think we're all set here for today. Thank you, everybody who hung in there uh, to the bitter end uh, to ask uh, questions and to hear the answers. Um, again, this will be recorded, and you'll get um, a copy of the recording with the email that will go out tomorrow. Uh, on that email will be some contact information for our staff. If you have any additional questions you'd like to ask, please reach out to any one of our staff members, and if they don't know the answer, they'll get it for you. Okay, thank you very much today. It's been a great webinar. Great, thank you everyone. Be awesome. safe. Thank you guys. Appreciate your, your attendance. Yep, have a good day.